Alto Goldfield is a first-year student at the prestigious Ortigia Academy of Magic. Though he's a good little student who got perfect marks in his other classes, Alto scored a whopping zero for his summoning magic. His professor warns him that if he's unable to form a contract with a familiar, he won't be advancing to his second year. Forming a contract with a familiar is usually easy. Some students have even passed the first year by creating contracts with rhinoceros beetles. With that, the professor gives him an ultimatum. He will repeat his first year if he doesn't form a contract with a familiar by tomorrow. After his meeting with the professor, Alto's fellow first-year student and close friend, Lilia Kudelfate, rushes to his side. He gives her the 411 on his situation, and being the good friend that she is, Lilia proposes to inflict a teeny tiny bit of bodily harm to the professor. You know what? Good for Alto. If he were with my friends, they'd just tell him to get good. In any case, Alto admits that his professor is correct since second years need familiars for tons of class activities. Lilia remains concerned about this and asks Alto if he's just going to accept the situation. He worked so hard all year. See, he did everything to get into the Royal Academy and tried even harder when he was in it. But since Alto's set on giving the summoning magic another shot, Lilia just offers her support if he needs it. After thanking her, he heads to the library and mulls over what to summon next. He already tried beetles, so that's out of the question. Then again, compatibility is essential for a successful summoning. So maybe he just needs to summon something really weird or unique? Just then, a book crashes right onto his head. He picks it up and wonders if a weird summoning book just so happened to fall onto him. Back in his room, he finds out that a weird summoning book did fall onto him. Lucky, lucky. The book is pretty beat up though, so Alto has no idea what it'll summon. Despite not knowing what to expect, he draws the magic circle anyway and begins chanting. A moment later, the magic circle starts glowing, and for the first time ever, Alto finally found himself on the brink of summoning success. He continues chanting, then draws blood from his finger. And after a burst of purple smoke, the summoning is complete. Now for the moment of truth. What did Alto summon? He looks through the smoke and finds a boingy-licious horned woman with a massive personality standing before him. She asks if he's the one who summoned her, but Alto is at a loss for words. Puzzled by his summoning, did he summon a human or something else entirely? But he's got more important things to worry about, like the fact that the horned woman before him is in her birthday suit. Immediately, Alto blushes and looks away before informing the woman of her bareness. She just flashes a mischievous smile and comes closer, teasing Alto for his sweet and innocent ways. The flustered boy ends up falling to the ground, and with this stranger now on top of him, she asks if he didn't know who he was summoning. Then, she leans in, closer and closer to whisper that she'll do anything for him. And just like that, his brain flatlines and poor little Alto's about to erupt from the woman's advances. Now, what did he want her to do again? Oh right, he finally remembers why she's even here. So he tells the woman to become his familiar. She gives him a confused look. But before anything could come out of that, a glowing magic circle appears on the floor, and a seal inscribes itself onto the woman's chest. As a whirlwind of magic circles them, she's taken aback by Alto's magic destiny. Soon after, the same seal appears on Alto's wrist and with the contract marks manifesting, the contract formation is a success. After all that, Alto's new familiar just smiles at him and says that she'll be helping her herself to some of his mana in exchange. And so, she locks lips with Alto and drains the boy of his magic. Once their little session's done, she finally introduces herself as Vermile, a demon. From now on, she says she's under his care and refers to him as Master. Vermile teases Alto by touching and reminding him that she'll do anything he wants. This was almost enough to make him cave, but he comes to his senses at the last minute. For his first order, he asks her to put some clothes on, so she gets dressed in his sister's clothes. Once they're settled, Alto gives her a rundown of his situation in the Magic Academy. Vermile understands his problem and explains that he wouldn't actually be able to summon most familiars because of his all-too-potent mana. His magic would be poisonous for regular demons, but this is excellent news for a powerful demon like Vermile. So basically, instead of being bad at something like the rest of us, Alta's just another victim of the I'm too powerful, I'm a failure trope. He then asks the playful demon why she became his familiar. She can break the contract if she wants, which means that Vermile allowed the situation. That's true, she says, admitting she could have killed him the moment she saw him. But she reveals that she has been trapped in the old summoning book for a very long time, and Alto helped her escape. He's her savior, and being a familiar is a low price to pay for freedom. The following day at school, Alto shows his teacher his new familiar. The teacher tells him he understands that he really wants to pass the class, but claiming a human woman as his familiar is a step too far, especially since they don't allow guests on campus. Vermile immediately comes into Alto's defense and shows the teacher the contract mark on her chest. The teacher nervously verifies it as legitimate, but he 
says that never has a human made another human their familiar. But Vermile protests again and tells him to say she's his familiar. Surprisingly, this brute force negotiation works, and he declares that Alto has finally passed his summoning exam. Alto celebrates his success since he can now advance to the second year. Meanwhile, the teacher asks Vermile if she's really fine with becoming Alto's familiar. To this, Vermile says it's too late to turn back now, so she doesn't mind. Alto and Vermile finally sit down for the teacher's class, but there's one person severely against their unusual relationship. After witnessing their flirtatious behavior, Lilia becomes frustrated and wonders about the identity of Alto's familiar. Much to her amusement, the teacher finally calls them out for their behavior, but Vermile snarkily says that other students also have their familiar sitting on top of them. She also argues that one of the school's doctrines is to live life alongside your familiar. To this, the teacher has no rebuttal and goes back to his lecture. Vermile continues flirting with Alto, and at this point, Lilia finally explodes. She interrupts the class and asks the two what they're doing. However, her outburst doesn't get her anywhere since the teacher asks her to step outside. Lilia then throws a fit in the hallway, unable to accept the situation. Later that day, Lilia runs into Alto and Vermile, and she asks Alto a barrage of questions regarding his mysterious familiar. Alto and Vermile glance at each other and remember their plan. Since students in the Magic Academy despise demons, they've decided Vermile should pretend to be a human. She can hide her horns, and no one would be able to tell the difference. So, Alto tells Lilia the same thing he's been telling everybody. She's Vermile, his familiar. Infuriated, Lilia throws her necktie at Alto and suddenly challenges him to a duel. Uh, what? With the help of his handbook, Alto reads that conflicts between students at the Magic Academy are to be resolved via strictly regulated duels to prevent discord. Let's get it on! So, the loser has to do whatever the winner says. If she wins, Lilia wants Vermile to stop hanging onto Alto. Alto is reluctant to accept the challenge, but relents after Vermile gives her support. Vermile then says that Lilia will have to do whatever Alto wants if they win. Lewd thoughts enter Lilia's mind, thinking of Alto, but she snaps out of it immediately and accepts the dual conditions. They move to a massive open fighting area, where their fight can be broadcasted across the campus. Lilia summons her familiar called Sylphid, a high-class wind spirit. Lilia brags about her familiar's mighty power and tells Alto to give up and tell her everything about his familiar. Alto tries to calm her down, but it's no use. Lilia is enraged and throws a powerful wind attack toward Alto and Vermile. Due to the attack's high speed, Alto can't block or dodge in time. Vermile suddenly steps before him to block the attack and tells him to trust in her. The attack lands, and a massive smoke fills the air. Lilia assumes her victory and prematurely celebrates, so she's surprised when she sees Alto and Vermile safe and sound after the smoke clears. Vermile smiles and asks if she's done attacking. It's her turn now, and she menacingly approaches her with her hands outstretched. The next moment, an embarrassed Lilia screams after being touched by Vermile. Smile. Lilia lies defeated on the ground, and Vermile tells her it's time for her to listen to their demands. Since Lilia's plan absolutely backfired on her, she's left with no choice but to cooperate. Alto tells Lilia his demands, and it's for her to be friends with Vermile. This surprises Lilia, but since the victor's demands are absolute, she reluctantly offers her hand to the familiar. The two shake hands after a passive-aggressive but polite exchange, and finally, peace has been achieved, and Alto hopes they really can be friends. At his dorm room, Alto asks Vermile not to cause too much trouble from now on. But the familiar retorts that today wasn't her fault. It's all because of Lilia and the fact that she's in love with him. Of course, Alto is dense like any other MC, concluding that Lilia is just being nice to him sometimes. Vermile flashes a mischievous smile and hints that she deserves a treat for doing well in their duel. Alto's taken aback, but she kneels before him and says she wants a little bit of his mana. They kiss, and after a while, Alto wonders why she needs to drain his mana. Vermile explains that she has become weak after being sealed away for centuries. His incredibly potent mana has been a big help to her. Without it, she wouldn't be able to retain a physical form. Alto tells Vermile that he thought contracting with a demon would be scary, but it's actually just kind of normal. Vermile says that normal humans couldn't handle their power even with a contract, but Alto is unlike any other person since he has what it takes for a demon to want to serve him. If smooching is too annoying, Vermile says, there are more effective ways of draining your mana. She then reaches between Alto's legs. Wanna give it a go? I am fine with kisses, thank you, is all the boy can say. Sometime later, Alto and Vermile are walking to school for the opening ceremony for the new school year. Alto is now a second year, and he's grabbing the student's attention thanks to Vermile and her eye-catching appearance. Due to this, Alto tells Vermile not to do anything to make herself stand out. Just then, a raging dragon appears in front of them and approaches them rapidly. Alto freezes upon seeing it, and as it's about to crash into him, Vermile flicks her finger on the massive creature's forehead, which propels it high in the air. Vermile proudly shows off what she just did to Alto, which is the exact opposite of not doing anything to stand out. Later at the opening ceremony, Alto scolds Vermile for drawing unnecessary attention by beating the dragon so easily. She argues that the dragon left her with no choice, but at this point, her standout appearance and massive jugs are probably the two biggest things drawing the most attention to her, not the dragon thing. After the ceremony,
ceremony, Alto and Vermeil are walking around the school when Lilia approaches them. Lilia tells them they're the talk of the campus since everyone saw them beat a rampaging dragon. She then scolds Vermeil for causing one thing after another ever since she showed up, but Vermeil doesn't react. To this, Lilia glares at her, frustrated. At Alto's first class in a massive garden, his professor informs them that all their classes will involve their familiars. According to the old woman, familiars will become inseparable companions when treated with love and care. But if their love isn't sincere, familiars will use their fangs and claws to tear their masters apart. Alto then moves on to the next class, where a young professor lectures about demon seals. Meanwhile, Vermeil is stuck onto Alto and hugging him without reservations. And of course Lilia, who's watching them from afar, is growing frustrated. The school day ends, and Alto walks back to his dorm with Lilia and Vermeil. Tensions are rising between the two, but Alto reminds them that he told them to be friends. Lilia and Vermeil argue a bit, but before things get any worse, an upperclassman suddenly calls Alto's attention. The short boy points accusingly toward Vermeil, and the upperclassman promptly introduces himself as Rex, a dragon rider, and says he has heard about their misdeeds against his little bro. Alto and the girls absolutely have no clue about who he is, and the short boy explains that they beat up his dragon earlier that day. Alto finally realizes what's happening, but Vermeil is more interested in the dragon riders. Alto explains that the dragon riders are a mage group with dragons as their familiars. Right after learning about this, Vermeil mocks their group, describing them as braggarts and fake tough guys, which prompts an angry reaction from the short boy. Rex interrupts them and says Vermeil has the guts to talk like that. He supposes that she must have used some sort of trick to take out the dragon, since she doesn't look tough at all. Vermeil plays innocent and naive, which further enrages the short boy. But during this commotion, Alto silently makes his way behind Rex and the angry guy and launches a surprise attack with magic crystals to subdue the two. Alto Alto and Vermeil celebrate their planned success, and Vermeil also compliments Alto for his advanced magic and great talent. However, their moment of triumph doesn't last long. Rex summons his familiar and immediately shatters the crystals, much to Alto's surprise. A massive fire-breathing dinosaur familiar named Tyranoske reveals itself, as Rex warns Alto to only pick fights with people on his level. The appearance of the menacing dinosaur scares Alto and Lilia, but Lilia doesn't fold and reprimands Rex for picking on Alto. Rex ignores her and says it's now their last chance to apologize. He also adds that Vermeil can show how sorry she is some other way if she wants. Alto steps forward ready to fight, and Rex declares it's time to take them out. Tyranoske angrily rushes forward, but Alto remains frozen and unmoving. At the last minute, Vermeil hugs him and says she'll be giving him the mana from their kiss yesterday. Suddenly, a magic circle appears behind Alto, with golden mana emanating from the ground. The dinosaur familiar is about to land its attack, but Alto comes in clutch with a massive crystal attack that immediately stops Tyranoske and also wounds Rex. With Rex and his little bro defeated, Vermeil mockingly asks them to show how sorry they are. Surprisingly, Rex admits defeat and apologizes for picking a fight. An elated Lilia then talks some trash, and oh boy, how the turntables! At his dorm, Alto scolds Vermeil for drawing attention to herself and causing problems. But the naughty demon doesn't see any problem with it since everything has been taken care of. Vermeil then remarks that school seems to be a handful and asks Alto if all his studying will get him what he wants in life. Alto reveals he wants to be a great mage and explains that their nation's mages are categorized into four ranks gold squares, silver squares, bronze squares, and apprentice mages. A bronze certification is challenging, and only a few get to silver. But Alto is ambitious and wants to be even better than the gold squares. Alto shares that the crown bestows a special rank to the most elite of gold mages, the platinum square, and this is his ultimate dream. But he admits it's ridiculous to say since he almost had to repeat a grade. But Vermeil suddenly brings him to her chest and shows her support for his goal. With a mischievous look, Vermeil tells him not to worry since she'll ensure his dream comes true. She suddenly walks away and takes off her dress much to Alto's surprise. Vermeil explains that she needs to refill her mana. As she approaches Alto, she asks him again if he's sure he wants to become a great mage. After all, some things have a price to pay, and Alto has to feed her his mana for the night. The following morning, Vermeil is sparkling and joyful, but Alto is tired and gloomy. It's pretty safe to say they spent a long night together, refilling mana. Lilia asks about Alto's mood, but Alto explains that he just didn't sleep well. Just then, Marks and Cheryl, fellow second years, greet Alto and Lilia. Marks suddenly grabs Alto's hand and congratulates him for beating an upper former like Rex. They share a sweet moment together, and Mark says he was right to pick Alto as his rival. After that, the old professor suddenly runs into the group and says that the headmaster wants to speak with the three of them. The three top students, Alto, Lilia, and Cheryl, meet the headmaster, who informs him that he's called for them to select a student rep for the second year class. Since only one of them can get the position, the headmaster has devised a special trial for the trio. Deep in the school forest, their task is to obtain a fairy flower by the 6 p.m. bell. The said flower is rare, according to Marks. Only one flower blooms in the forest. 
whoever's fastest wins the title, and Mark seems to be competing, although he's not even invited. He wonders why the headmaster didn't ask him, but Cheryl explains that it's because he's failing all nine subjects. Nonetheless, Marx is determined to win, so he summons his familiar Francois, a small and cute beetle. He confidently sprints forward deep into the forest, but immediately entangles himself in a trap set by a plant monster. Cheryl stays behind to rescue her young master, leaving Lilia and Alta to go find the fairy flower and win the title for themselves. Soon after, they easily find the flower on top of a high cliff. It's easily accessible, but a Cerberus is guarding the pathway toward the flower. Alto wonders how they'll get past it, but Lilia reminds Alto they're not a team. She brings out an invisibility potion, ready to drink it and sneak through the monster. But Alto says that the Cerberus has a great sense of smell. Lilia argues that the monster's leaking snot, so it must be sick and unable to smell. So, Lilia drinks the potion and turns invisible right after. However, her clothes stick out like a sore thumb, so she takes off her clothes. Lilia gets nervous at the thought of stripping in front of Alto, but since the potion is working, she manages to fully undress. After removing her ribbons, she's ready to proceed with her plan. As Vermeil and Alto watch from a distance, Vermeil asks Alto if he's really letting Lilia go and win. Alto realizes he has to do something to get ahead of Lilia, so he asks Vermeil about the power she gave him yesterday. Vermeil explains it was mana he gave before, but she amplified it and gave it back to him. Vermeil says that she doesn't need to boost his mana for them to get past the Cerberus, but she'll need some mana from him. It's their usual ritual. Vermeil suddenly pushes pushes him down, and since she needs mana, it's time for another refill session. Meanwhile, Lilia tries to sneak past the monster, but the Cerberus notices her smell since only two of its heads are sick. The monster launches an attack, but Alto saves Lilia at the last minute. The Cerberus rushes toward Alto, and Alto tells Lilia to run and get the fairy flower. Alto grabs the monster's attention with a crystal attack. When it's distracted, Vermal jumps into the air and activates a massive demon spell. Her spell immediately takes out the monster as Lilia grabs the fairy flower. Lilia returns to Alto and Vermal, and she unexpectedly offers the flower to Alto. She admits her defeat and says he deserves to have it, but during this moment, the effect of her invisibility potion wears off. Alto blushes and nervously informs Lilia of the sudden change as Vermeil laughs at the hilarious situation. Lilia screams in embarrassment, and during this commotion, she unintentionally lets go of the fairy flower. The flower then flies in the air and lands near a surprised Cheryl. Alto and the others arrive at the scene and discover they're too late. Back at the school, Cheryl is now wearing her symbol as the second year class rep, but is feeling insecure about her unusual victory. With his cheerful attitude, Mark swings her around and reassures her that she's the one left holding the flower at the end of everything. Lilia and Alta say they have no problem with it, and Marx gives a round of applause for Cheryl. Despite her loss though, Lilia declares that she'll leave Alto in the dust next time. Alto says he'll work hard to ensure she doesn't leave him behind. Ha! Lilia would like to see him try. From worrying about passing his first year of school and struggling to summon anything, Alto is now in his second year with a beautiful, familiar alongside him. Vermeil may be flirtatious and bound to cause a scene and attract attention in school, but her loyalty and obedience belong to Alto. Along with Lilia, Alto will have a fun time in school. Oh, don't forget those after-school mana refill sessions! Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.